We're going to uh, start this glider competition, and I'll just be sharing my screen. We're going to fly all of the gliders just back to back. Um, each of them take just a couple uh, seconds to load. So between gliders, we have maybe a five second pause or something. You'll be able to see the next glider coming up, um, and it will just take a minute to load. So, okay, like I said, we have 10 entries. Uh, this um, simulator just automatically goes through them in the order. Uh, of the ID number that you sent. So you all just self-selected a four-digit ID number. There were no duplicates. So um, anyway, it, it just uh, puts them in order and flies them in that order. So there's no particular order here. This first one is called 00, or excuse me, 0101. Um, are you guys able to see this okay? Okay, great. <clears throat> So uh, you may recall that we have a little bit of turbulence, just little nudges that are uh, somewhat randomized um, in X, Y, and Z throughout the flight. So you'll see these things bounce around a little bit. We're just kind of giving them a puff of air to see if we can uh, cause some destabilization. So of course, if there was a larger uh, eddy out there or something that you know wind was suddenly going in an opposite direction, then this would change things. But the purpose of this sim is just basically to keep nudging them and see if it can throw them off track a little bit. So <clears throat> and feel free to comment, uh, you know, if you have questions or, or thoughts, you know, something you want to share, feel free to just uh, speak up. So I put a little red flag out there. You see that flag coming up? Um, and just for a sense of scale, that's about a 10 foot flag. Over here on the right is our altitude and we're about, uh, there we go, we hit the ground there. Um, so let me look at that distance. That distance was 1169. So that first glider 0101 had a distance of 1169. So the only distance that's recorded is the distance directly in front of the glider that's launched. So if after launch it curves to the right or something, uh, you don't get extra points, you know, for that extra distance. You only get the the distance in this direction. Um, so, like I said, that that little red flag I have out there, that red flag um, was placed at the location that we would have estimated the baseline glider to achieve. Now, it wouldn't have because it had because it had a spiral problem, right? So it wouldn't have gotten there. But I just put it out there as kind of a marker so you could kind of gauge how your glider did relative to that uh, baseline glider, if you could get rid of the spiral issue. Um, and then you're gonna see three other flags pop up. So there's a little yellow one out there now as well. And by the way, these first two contenders are really solid. I mean, they're, they're not, uh, you can see dynamically, they're very stable. They just keep coming back to the center line. Um, anyway, there's a little yellow flag out there now. So that's the current gold, uh, the, the gold medalist currently, that's their distance there, 1169. This is the current distance of the glider right now. And then we'll fill in silver and bronze as, uh, you know, as we get more gliders flying here. So, you know, this is in true Olympic fashion since we just finished the Winter Olympics. Hopefully you're still in that spirit. Um, <clears throat> okay, so along the bottom here, we have the heading. So you can see this guy is really holding a pretty solid heading. And luckily we have no collision detection other than with the ground, so you can fly through the flags. Okay, so this one just passed the, the baseline glider or what would have been the baseline glider. So that puts them in first place with 1285. So that's the new uh, So we're all launching from 50 feet. So over here is the altitude, by the way. So uh, we all start at 50. And uh, yeah, I just took that glide ratio, which I think was about 25. 
and uh, multiply it by 50 and put the flag out there. Yep. You can also see the airspeed on the left hand side here. So, and these are in increments of 10 feet per second. So, uh, pretty much everybody launches right around here about 15 or 16 feet per second. So, okay, again, another solid uh, contestant here. So, actually, about halfway through the altitude and a distance of uh, about 800 feet. So, this is probably going to overtake the first place runner there. What was the number of this one, the, the code number? That's a great question. Let's see. Did, did anybody catch that? I was talking. 300 right. something. The previous one was 322. I'm not sure what this one is. Yeah, so the first one was 0101. That was 322. In just a minute, it'll show it to me on my screen over here. So. Okay, so this is a new leader. Just broke 1500 feet. That was 1176, so 1176. Okay, this is 1257 uh, CBE lighter final. Hey Doug, well, well, this one flies. I'll I'll self admit and say I was one of the jerks who didn't get their homework done. Um, got I got wrapped around the axle trying to optimize using uh, the automated tools. But I, I watched your video on Mockup X. Um, is that just the newest implementation of the Mockup Pro? It kind of replaces yeah, think, that, or yeah. So um, so I developed Mockup. A long time ago, actually, while I was still working at Scaled, actually, um, I developed the the core code for it, and then I've I've iterated it on it a little bit. But then when I came here to Utah State, um, I've had a student who rewrote it from scratch in Python. So the original mockup was written in uh, Fortran. Um, I know that that sounds ancient to to most of you but actually it turns out Fortran's a really cool language and there's modern versions of it that are actually really quite powerful object oriented and everything so it's written in a in a modern version of Fortran but um but then uh, I had a student rewrite it in Python which is a little bit easier to interface with um for those who anyway Python is a lot like MATLAB and it's just a little bit easier to use it's a little slower actually it's about an order of magnitude slower but uh, but easier for people to interface with. So um, so yeah, that's the newest version of it, uh, Mockup X, and uh, and uh, it has one additional benefit, and that is that uh, wings with sweep uh, it handles a little bit better than than the this mockup version that we're all using right here. Um, okay, so that was twelve. Let's see. Let me look at those numbers. So that was glider 1257 with the distance of 1694. So almost 1700 feet. <clears throat> so yeah, mockup X um, is, is pretty powerful. It's a lot more powerful than what we're using here. The, the graphical user interface for mockup four is just a little bit limited because you can only do wings like uh, simply tapered wings, for example. But um, in in mockup X, you can change the uh, the airfoil as a function of span. You can put in like crazy twist, crazy dihedral distributions, and anyway, you can get come up with some really cool designs. So, um, so at this point, there's there's really no reason to use mockup Pro anymore. It's kind of totally replaced, unless you're looking for speed for some reason. But, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this glider has. An un, I think unstable fugoid. You can see it's uh, rocking up and down, and uh, that may you can kind of watch the angle of attack over here. It got up to five, and each time if it's growing a little bit, now it's up to seven. So yeah, this is unstable. It's eventually going to hit some stall point where the angle of attack is just too great, and it will uh, will go through a pretty severe nose down pitch. There we go. <clears throat> 
Okay, so that was uh, 1313 uh, CNB1. And by the way, uh, the, the author of that particular glider told me that CNB1 stands for crash and burn. So, so maybe that was a little bit of self prophecy there. Okay, with a distance of 936 feet. So we've got 1616, a static margin of almost 80%. Okay, so we start off with a little bit of a fugoid. We'll see if this grows. Or, uh, you know, I mean, oh, and it looks like it's got a little bit of spiral in it as well. Yeah, so fugoid and spiral. <clears throat> oh no. Okay, so that was uh, 1616 with a distance of 238. Again, only got credit for the distance ahead of where it uh, was launched. So 238 feet ahead of there. Okay, we have Sweet Emotion, 7211 here. That's a cool canard design. Uh, canard designs can be really efficient if they're designed well. Um, they're a little tricky to design sometimes, but, uh, but they can be very efficient. <clears throat> Um, one thing that's interesting about a canard design, and again, the graphics here are not re are not uh, reflecting that, right? We just have some some glider in here that's being used for all of these flights. But but the canard design, the main wing is producing the uh, the pitch stability because the main wing is has to be behind the center of gravity, so that's actually what's creating pitch stability. And the horizontal stabilizer, or what we would call horizontal stabilizer, is ac actually out front, and it actually is a destabilizing surface. So so that canard is destabilizing, the main wing is stabilizing. It's, it's not a problem as long as it's designed well. And this one seems to be designed fine, uh, except that it has this spiral mode. So that uh, looks like the fugoid damped out, but the, but the spiral mode uh, took over. So that was a distance of 453 feet. Okay, we've got 7649, uh, aspect ratio of 23. Static margin of 20% and a weight of a little bit less than a pound. Uh, by the way, I'll send each of you a, um, a plot of your flight. So you'll get uh, just a graphic that shows the, the history, time history of your flight, basically, so you can see what happened. Oh, this So does somebody want to do uh, an L over D calculation real quick for me for 1694 feet divided by 50? 33.88. 33.88? Yeah. OK, so almost a glide ratio of 34. So are, do we have any glider pilots in here? Yeah, I used to fly sailplanes a long time ago. <laughs> OK, so how are we doing, Mark? Uh, 33? That's about a standard club glider. I, the glider I used to fly was 34 to 1, so it's pretty average. But for competitions now, they're in the 50s. Yeah. yeah. ASK yeah. 21 was about that. Yeah, I used to fly a Blahnik and a Grobe 102 and uh, was a Schweitzer 134. And they were all in the, in the low 30s. <sighs> Yeah, I so got one, my got my commercial ad on there in Tatchby. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> what else was I gonna do? <laughs> That's right. I used to fly at Cal City. They had a uh, club there that was started by the Douglas Aircraft Group back in the in the day, and I learned to fly sailplanes out at Cal City. So we had really nice waves, and you could go over to Tehachapi and catch the shear line and stay up all day and. Um, you, any on any given day, you could run to Whitney and back. It was a good place to fly. I think the aspect ratio on this one's going to beat the other one. So we've still got more than twenty percent of our altitude left. So 
Yeah, looks like we're going to beat. This is a new first place contender. Now, one thing I want to point out, these are hand-launched gliders without a pilot, right? So we've made these extremely stable, both statically and dynamically, right? Um, but this would be horrible to try to fly, right? I mean, these, these would be really nasty um, because they'd be fighting you all the time. They wouldn't want to change heading. They wouldn't want to roll. You know, these are just really stable. So these tend to have quite a bit of dihedral, you know, compared to what we would normally fly. Okay, so we got a new, uh, new first place. Maybe going to break uh, 1,800 feet here. All right, so just over 1,800. Uh, 1,806 feet. So do you want to do a glide ratio for us on that? 36. 36. OK, great. Slow soar, wingspan of 12 feet, static margin 25%. So it uh, looks like these are tapered. These wings are tapered slightly at the tips to try to be maybe a little bit more elliptical. So I obviously have a fugoid. Let's see if uh, it looks like it's growing. So. <laughs> All right, so the simulator will automatically kill it if the rotation rates get too high. So somehow the stall model said it was rotating really fast or something. So anyway, a distance of 349.9 feet, so 350 feet for that guy. Okay, 8036, uh, Chauka. Maybe I just don't know the lingo, but uh 0.6 pounds 0.58 pounds so this is very light chuka 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 okay there's a motor glider called the chuka oh okay. in 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 france if you see the there's kind of ravens up in the alps that uh soar pretty well and they're called chukas Yeah, the flying wings French. <clears throat> so this looks pretty solid. Notice our heading is dead on at zero. So this has got a lot of roll stability in it to get rid of the spiral mode. <clears throat> The good gliders are really boring to watch. Okay, so we're about halfway and we are over 900. So this is a contender for first place. We're at about uh, 23 feet still in altitude. So this may overtake our gold medal. <clears throat> It also feels like this one's flying slower than others. I don't know if that's true. 
Um, it's hard to tell from this little notch over here, you know, but it just feels like it's flying slower. Probably makes it's sense pretty light, so for yeah. How li okay, for how light it is, yeah. This uh, this must be your glider. Can I? Is that true? Yep. Um, do you want to tell us about it? Well, about your design process here for a second. Um, I don't know. I I, I was kind of new to trying to figure out how you were expecting us to do it, so I started kind of designing it through Excel and just kind of uh, playing with the numbers in Excel. Then once I liked it, then I dropped it into into a uh, mock-up. What kind of numbers did you play with? Um, I just kind of took some of the standard uh, like tail volume and then just tried to minimize uh, uh, a lot of the a lot of the factors like the static margin and try to get it kind of on the edge you know high aspect ratio and then to avoid the uh, um the, that roll mode added a whole bunch of whole bunch of dihedral okay great but i also you know play i played with the washout a bit and that had some impact and uh dropping in the the vertical a little bit to get the the cg down seemed to help a little bit oh interesting okay Okay, so here we are. We got our champions. Our gold here is Chuka. Um, we got uh, silver over here, 76.49. And uh, in bronze CVE glider. So all very high aspect ratio. Um, yeah, I got a lot of roll stability here. Obviously, really high, uh, really high dihedral. So oh, winning distance. Uh, winning distance. Let's see. Yeah. So the final, uh, the final distance on that was 1906. So uh, it's, what's the glide ratio for that? 38.1. 38.1. So pretty good. So we're pushing 40. So nice job. Well, thank you. Well, I, I want to show you something that might make you feel a little bit sick. Sure. Okay. Someone that went so, like what's that? 70. 70 to one or something <laughs> no so um i'm taking your input file by the way so this is your 1257.json mm -hmm. and you you did a launch kinetic energy of 4.554 to make sure that it was launching at the trim state right yes so i'm just gonna just gonna change and now launch at 15. So i'm just gonna chuck this really really hard all right we're just going to fly it and see what happens. Okay. Okay, so here's 1257. The only thing we're changing is uh, how hard we're launching this. So instead of launching it right at the perfect trim speed, we're going to, we're just going to give it a whole lot of energy. Now, I, I kind of, um, I alluded to this, I know, in one of our, uh, by the way, while that's running, you had said that it would climb a little bit and then settle out, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I thought about doing that, but I was afraid. <laughs> yep. I don't blame you. So I'm just going to pull up. Uh, this is the previous flight here, real quick. Um, so I got 300 feet before it even lost any altitude. Exactly. So you're now just below 50. Yeah, you're out at four or five, almost, yeah, 500 feet. All right. So while that's flying, th this is the kind of a thing that you're going to get that I'll be sending you um, for each of your flights. So it'll, it has velocity as a function of time. Um, and, uh, and those are broken out into UV and W components. So your three components of velocity as well as total airspeed. Of course, total and U are basically on top of each other. So 
you can see, I mean, you, you have a, a convergent fugoid, right? You can see that fugoid. It's really challenging to launch this at the exact right condition. So you don't have a minor fugoid that you have to damp out. Um, and by the way, I just, I chose because he got third place. Okay. That's the only reason I just, I just thought, I want to try this and see what if we just huck this really hard, you know, it's got a, and, and we can see it's got a convergent fugoid there. A um, couple more things that you'll see. So down here, we have the strengths of the wind that you experienced throughout the flight and where they were in the flight. Um, not that that's really important, but that's what's causing these little peaks, you know, in our side velocities and stuff. Over here, we have angles, um, alpha and beta. So alpha is in blue, beta is in orange. And uh, anyway, so you can see how those vary throughout the flight. So each time you get hit with alpha, you're going to have this short period mode that you've got to, that's dampening out. And then it's also uh, potential for igniting the fugoid again, which we can see these little fugoid modes, you know, that we have to keep damping out throughout the flight. Um, um, anyway, and so then you can see this is the top back and side view. So um, from the side, that's the green line here. We launched at 50 feet. We went out to uh, about 1,700 feet. Um, from the back, we didn't deviate much. So if you're watching this flight from the back, you know, you didn't uh, move left or right very much. And then also from the side, or excuse me, from the top, you can see we bounce around a little bit. And that's because of these, uh, this input down here that we have. Uh, you know, that's tossing us around right to left, but. Okay, so let's see where we're at over here. Uh, what was your distance before? Was it 17? 1694. 1694, and tell me what, what was first place? Does anybody remember that off the top of their head? 1906. 1906, all right. Okay, so we've broken 17. We're about five feet off the ground here. And by the way, this simulator does not include ground effect. Ground effect would actually increase the distance here slightly, um, but this simulator does not have it, uh, it. I don't have it turned on, I guess I should say, and because it, uh, that's not the point of this class to use ground effect. So I'm, okay, so let's look at your official distance here. one okay so official distance was 1930 and i assume i could have done this with uh taking third place just to see if they could have competed with first had they launched differently right and yeah. uh, I, I think you could do this with any of the any of the gliders that were stable with their fugoid you can launch it now I tried, I went up to even 16. You notice I went up to 15 foot pounds. I went up to 16 and that was too much. If you launch it too hard, then it'll actually immediately stall because it climbs so rapidly and gets really high angle of attack. So let me just show you what your plot looks like from the second flight and uh, how it's slightly different. So, so there's our first flight. You know, we launched at 50 straight shot down. Here we launched at 50 again, but notice if you draw a straight line through this, once it settled out, it was as if we had launched at about maybe 55 feet or something like that. So we got just a little bit extra distance there uh, hmm. based off of that. Now, without a simulator, I don't know how you would estimate what the maximum amount you can launch this at. You know, I, I played with it in the sim to see how hard I could throw it and, and uh, without it stalling out. So I don't know how you'd do that without the sim, but just a thought, you know, um, one way you could increase your distance here, obviously, is to launch harder. As long as your modes are convergent. See, we had a big old huge fugoid here that had to dampen out because we were, we were now launching very much off of the design point, right? But as long as it's convergent, as long as the fugoid is convergent, and as long as we don't stall, uh, that should eventually, it should bring us back uh, to a stable point here. Hmm. So we are launching close to, let's see, 25. So this is about 28 feet per second where we were really trimmed just above 15. 